Well, you join us live here. A very good evening to you from the military stadium here in Aldershot. Bang on cue for the national anthem there as uh, the teams uh, uh, who are involved, obviously, in this uh, major units final tonight in this Army Cup final between three para and two, three para engineer regiments meeting each other here in this major units final. And it's my pleasure, John Knighton, to be joined this evening by two of the most senior people in uh, British Army football tonight. We've got Jimmy Blair, who's the Army senior head coach, and also Gerwin Griffiths, who's the under-23 head coach as well. Gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. As you can see, we've got uh, the sunshine here in Aldershot, uh, a, a very sharp uh, contrast to uh, events down there at Lords of the Cricket, which very unfortunately has had to be abandoned there with the army winning uh, just on the Duckworth Lewis method by four runs in the end uh, against the RAF in that deciding game. Well, the cricket's finished, but we do have live football tonight. And gentlemen, looking forward very much to uh, an exciting major units final uh, tonight. Uh, your thoughts first, uh, Jimmy, really, uh, from, uh, from your point of view. What, do you, what sort of a game are you expecting tonight? Um, uh, good evening, John, and thanks for the invite along uh, this evening. Um, and uh, a hello to everyone uh, watching online as well. Uh, indeed, the sun is shining. Um, I, I quite would have fancied three paras, the, the favourites of the rain. Uh, had, had stayed about, not in um, the, the infantry uh, background there, but um, two parachute regiments uh, or regiment units going head to head, uh, 16 brigade um, neighbours. Uh, it's going to be a fierce game. Uh, I've looked at the team sheet and the squads, two, three engineers looking the, the favourites on paper, but um, you know, knowing the mentality of the parachute regiment, we'll, we'll expect a, a game nonetheless. And Griff, as well, from your point of view, it's uh you, you know quite a lot of these players, don't you, with your under-23 uh, coaching, and so I'm sure you'll, you'll be keeping a very close eye out on them. Uh, good evening, John. And yeah, there's, a, there's a, a great spread of young players on show tonight, which is great to see. I think we're in, like Jimmy said, in for a tough, tasty uh, clash, especially the mentality of these two airborne units, and I think it is the first first airborne final so um, yeah looking forward to it well let's uh, take a look at the two teams shall we we'll start with the uh, three para they'll be wearing the white shirts and uh, the green shorts this evening that's three para in goal for them is Reese McNabb Mark Kenny uh, Pete Dante Lewis Baisley Ryan Almore Stuart Mott uh, Ryan Waterhouse their captain this evening is Dominic Wormsley wearing number eight William Thorne Nathan Elwood and Jack Squires uh, those are the starting 11 for them and uh, as far as the 2-3 uh, Para Engineer Regiment are concerned in their maroon kit this evening, uh, in goal for them is Felix Norman, Alex Williams, uh, Matt Maticor, uh, Michael Williams is uh, the c uh, captain for them this evening, Simon Dean, uh, Frank, Frankie Fitzmorris, Dalton Crompton, Callum Vincent, Ashley Tandy, Liam Silver and Kyle Simmers. We think uh, they're certainly just playing one man up front for them, that's Tandy is going to be their lone striker, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of formation they line up in, and also for the Paras as well, they look like they're playing um, possibly uh, four at the back, so interesting formations, and we'll, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll gather that throughout the, the course of the game. Our officials this evening, match official referee Sergeant Simon Thorburn of the Royal Signals, his assistants tonight, Staff Sergeant Steve Timms from the Army Air Corps, and Corporal Harry Scott from the Adjutant General's Corps RMP, with the fourth official is W01 Barrington Ellison, Baz Ellison from the RLC. We are just about ready to go. You join us bang on cue at the start of the 23 Army Cup final. The 122nd such game. Away we go straight away. And uh, early moment, good early moments for both of these teams just to get themselves sorted. It's uh, three para with uh, Wormsley wearing number eight tonight. Dominic Wormsley, 25 years old. He will get us get the ball into that penalty area. And that was a, a fearsome clearance there. No from... nonsense, that. no nonsense. <laughs> Early parts of the game, you just want to clear the lines, um, give nothing away so soon. Absolutely. And straight away the challenge is coming in. We believe this is the first ever all airborne units final tonight. Uh, and uh, certainly with 2-3 Engineer Regiment, they were formed 20 years ago. In, uh, so in 2023, here we are with them 20 years on and uh, how appropriate for them to be playing in their first Army Major Units final. Oh, and straight away, coming down on that right-hand side, it's uh, Vincent, gets the ball across, that's a what great a early save. save. What a save. Well, yeah. 
Callum Vincent there, we know all about him on that right hand side, but a fine save from Rhys McNabb. Yeah, that was an excellent save. Uh, you know, that should have been a goal. It, it was a an excellent ball delivered into the, the six-yard box, and, and all he had to do was, was keep it low, keep it on target. The keeper spread himself well, and a fantastic save. An exciting start to the final. So just under a minute play that we've had our first opportunity here for a goal in this Army final. But it remains nil-nil, and that will really uh, impress the 2-3 uh, parrot. They're off again, and here Zane is Tandy. Tandy. And surely he's going to score, oh, and he's missed it. Oh, my goodness me. Well, there's a common thread there, John. Callum Vincent in that number 10 pocket, feeding Ash Tandy, and he is lightning quick. And, uh, yeah, in on goal again, causing a threat in the early couple of minutes. Well, really, there should be two up, shouldn't they? And I just wonder whether we're going to... Uh, they will rue these early missed chances here. We've only just been playing just over a minute, and two guilt edge chances for the team in the all mauve strip all maroon but it's they have a corner it certainly should be 2-0 i think um you know as griff rightly pointed out no nonsense from the back uh, of, of the engineer defense uh, and, and you know within a minute two two breaks of play where it should be 2-0 well great work there from alex williams the right back just uh, moving himself in from that right back position and created an opportunity and michael williams the captain I'm not sure if they're related at all, uh, but uh, he had a, he had a chance then as well. So, um, well, they're not related, John. But we do have a, a brother um, a, a brother pair in in the lineup, Jack. Um, I think he's injured at the moment, to be honest. Actually, he didn't make the squad. But Liam Silver has a younger brother that just missed out today, I believe. Uh, the Silver brothers. Well, don't forget you're joining us live on Forces News Facebook and our YouTube channel this evening. Andy Wilson Land says, come on the sappers. Dennis Schofield says, come on three para. So um, let us know where you're watching. We'll give you a mention on the programme tonight. It's live here in Aldershot for this Army Cup final. And we've already had a very lively start. I think we could have uh, asked for yeah, any wow. more, although um, the 2-3 uh, Engineer Regiment, Power Engineer Regiment will, will have really wished they could have uh, put at least one of those chances away and they really were guilt edge chances as well not a lot that uh, Reese McNabb could do about that second one but it went agonizingly wide of his left hand post but here come three para nice to hear support coming through online there John I think uh, that sort of adds to what we've got here live maybe, maybe just short of 300 people maybe um, yep. I've just seen a, a coach load of paras uh, been dropped off and, and also I've seen some some of the old bull, the old shot uh, um, association parachute regiment. Well it's good to have as many supporters here supporting this historic final 122 times it's been played this is the 122nd time bit of an early touch for the goalkeeper he's got himself in a bit of a fix there Felix Norman got himself out of it eventually ball goes out of play but uh, Kyle Simmers just guiding it uh, away there. Unusual to see that from Phoenix Norman, a very composed goalkeeper usually, been with the under-23 setup, also uh, an academy player at Exeter. Um, yeah, I think he'll be disappointed with himself. Here's three para with Stuart Mott. But it's certainly uh, the, uh, the Sappers who started best here. Two good chances early on. I think uh, three parry yet really to get themselves into this game. Bit of uh, confusion. You can see that the sappers are putting so much pressure on them, John. They they don't have time to think. And uh, the likes of Tandy, Vincent, and uh, Silver in there are causing too many problems on and off the ball at the moment. Well, they have the throw. In. They have the throw in then on this uh, left-hand side, taken by Matty Court. <laughs> Corporal Court only finds a white shirt and this is Stuart Mott brings it forward just aiming for the man up front who is uh, Pete Dante collected by Waterhouse done well there good challenge though good interception from the defence again that was Alex Williams who got in there and made the challenge and Here a chance again, again for the again. Callum Vincent putting Ashley Tandy through Tandy what a handful he's turned to be finds Vincent again 
It's that combination of Vincent and Tandy. Yeah. And Silva as well. What a ball that is as well. Gets the cross in. It's in. And, and it's it surely in the back of the net this time. And no mistake this Callum time. Vincent. Callum Vincent couldn't miss yeah. from such close range. Yeah, the parachute regiment just didn't deal with the threats there. Overwhelmed. Um, and Warren should have stopped the ball going out wide. But a good cross into the box and, and a well-taken goal. Well, Dalton Crompton was the man who got that cross in. It really beat everybody. Nothing at all the goalkeeper could do about it. And there was Callum Vincent to put the ball in the back of the net. And after just six minutes, deservedly, 2-3 Power Engineer Regiment had the lead. Yeah, I think the, the, the Power Regiment now have got a lot to do to get their minds set on, on what's coming their way. They, they've had six minutes of, of hell, to be fair. And, uh, yeah, they've got to change things pretty quickly. Well, it's a really good start for them. They could be three 0 up, to be fair, but they've got the they've got the goal they certainly deserve. And there's such a handful those two up front. And Another uh, break of play again. Silver, Vincent again. Great what a tackle. challenge that was! Great tackle, but the danger's still not over because be Dalton Compton. It was quite a hefty challenge, wasn't it, on Vincent? And uh, he looks like he's going to be okay. But my word. Old school tackle that, you can see he got the ball fairly as well. Great tackle. Yeah. So an early goal then to settle this. The nerve certainly from uh, two, three power engineers, although the way they started this game, no sign of any, any nerves from them at all. They lead one nil. And there's it's definitely a clear, a clear intent from two, three engineers there. That's played to the strengths and get it to the, the star players, the Tandys and uh, the, the Silvers, and it's worked. It certainly has so far. I'm not quite sure that three para know what's hit them, but uh, they're going to have to uh, get themselves together, maybe a bit of possession, just to build their confidence a little bit. But not with a ball like that, picked up by Dean. Walsing his way through. And here they go once again with uh, Crompton. Plays the ball in. But uh, Rhys McNabb will collect that without too much bother. I know Stu Mott kind of started an attacking midfield role. Um, after the first six minutes there, he's dropped more into a defensive role. Uh, probably the most experienced player uh, for the Parachute Regiment on the, on the field there. So he, he's identified the threat and dropped back. Yeah, 40 years old. He's still not sure he'll keep yeah. up without Standy, though. <laughs> He's been around for a while, hasn't he? <laughs> Live here on Forces News Facebook and YouTube, direct from the military stadium here in Aldershot tonight. And 2 3 Para Engineer Regiment lead by a goal to nil. Didn't quite come off that pass from Callum Vincent. But so far, Felix Norman has had absolutely nothing to do in the uh, Sapper's goal. That's a lovely little chink there from Alex Williams. Looked very impressive so far on that uh, right side of defence. Matty Core on the left. And Simon Dean marshalling things in the middle with uh, his skipper, Michael Williams. It's an experienced pair that at the back, Simon Dean and Mike Williams have both uh, been around for a while, played core football. Simon Dean was actually on the same team as I when uh, we got to the Army Cup final here 10 years ago now. Uh, sadly on the end of uh, a 4-1 defeat that day, but very experienced pair. Yeah, and uh, just signs that uh, three power are just beginning to get their composure back here, winning a throw in on that far side. Here's Waterhouse. Bit of a chase on then for Pete Dante, though. He's wearing number three, certainly playing a, a striker's role for them. Tries to get the ball inside. Good challenge from Waterhouse again. But it'll be the Sappers who bring it clear once more. That's a fantastic ball again through to Ashley Tandy. But he can't uh, control it quick enough. And Stu Mott using his experience there, just blocking the run through. They seem to have come up with an early plan to try and nullify Tandy. And I, 
I think they've had to do something quickly. Yes, it probably wasn't in their initial game plan. Nice work from Dante. That's a good switch there on the right bit of space. Here's Thorne. Nice work again from Vincent. This time puts Kyle Simmers through. And here is Vincent again, out there to the right-hand side to Crompton. Seems to be a common thread Vincent. that the, the power unit seems to just be giving the ball back too cheaply and the sapper unit seems to be keeping it a little bit better. That's a good ball through. Well defended in the end by... Williams. Williams, yeah. Yeah, the he's, he's started well, he has, Mike Williams. And there's Vincent again. He's at the centre of absolutely everything so far. Here's Callum Vincent. You can see the players, they're, they're, they're knackered after that storm that they've both teams have just experienced. 12 minutes, Army Cup final. Should settle down now. You've got to feel for the cricketers who've been rained off at Lords. We've got bright sunshine here in Aldershot. Not to say we haven't had some heavy rain here throughout the day. I've been here most of the day with the, the Army rugby teams, both men and the women, and uh, we certainly had a couple of uh, hefty showers earlier on this afternoon. But it's bright and sunny at the moment. Beautiful evening for football. And here come the Ryan Amore on that right-hand side. Nice, that's, nice. A, that's a lovely bit of play. What can they do here? Good challenge, though. And again, this is Mott bringing the ball forward for three para. Loses out, though. And this is a real opportunity again. Well, he's onside yeah, as well. He looks he was onside. He 1v1. And here's Ashley Tandy this time. He's still going. He's looking for some support, but Great doesn't find play it. there to get numbers behind. Yeah, they needed to, didn't they? They need to get men back quickly. Otherwise, it could quite easily have been 2 0. Parachute Regiment just getting on the ball a bit more now, a little bit more composure. Certainly haven't given up. Good break down the right. Good cross from. Good cross in. Yep, and that was Nathan Elwood. And it is picked up by the Sappers on that. By the, well, there was a, a claim from the Sappers that it was a goal kick, but uh, referee has allowed it to go on. Here's Amor. Infield to Lewis Baisley. He's offside. As you, said, as you said there, Jim, they're trying to get back into this game. Waterhouse on the left there, showing some good tricky play. And then obviously on the right there with Elwood. They might be the two that, that might be able to create something for them if they're going to. Yeah, two, three are defending well. As you said before, three para trying to force the ball forwards. And it just ends up um, at the feet of uh, a two, three player. So they're defending well as a unit. Oh, great to have the expert comments from uh, from Jimmy and Griff this evening, joining us for our live coverage here from Aldershot, live on Forces News Facebook and our YouTube channel tonight. And keep those messages coming through. Joshua Munro says, "Come on, three para, they need your support, Josh, tonight." They're trailing by a goal to nil at the moment. They're absolutely bombarded in these those first couple of minutes. It could quite easily be three nil, but they've kept it down to one. And here's. Dominic Wormsley. Wormsley plays it back inside to Squires. Bit of a midfield battle going on at the moment. Nice play. Look at that one touch. Yeah, lovely ball. stuff from uh, the again. Sappers again. But just that long ball, just a little bit too far for the Tandy to catch. There of Fitzmaurice, Silva, Vincent through to Tandy. Uh, and they're all on, on the same page. Yeah, they've really started well here in their very first final, their first major units final. They just seem quicker on the ball, don't they? And once they lose it, they win it back more quickly. So a lot of work to be done then for three para. Oh, and that's a, a risky play out then from the keeper, from McNabb. He got away with that one. He'll go long this time. 
Wormsley lays it back, but it's easily chopped out again by Alex Williams for the Sappers. Just over a quarter of an hour played in this first half of the 2023 Army Cup final. So much tradition, so much history involved in these matches. And there's been a long road for both of these teams to get oh, through. Ball That's Beasley. a lovely ball, but an offside flag goes up. Oh, it's unfortunate. He seems a, a good player, that Beasley. Um, trying to feed the ball through him. Uh, unfortunate for it to be offside, but just thinking back to that early save from McNabb, what a fantastic save that was. Um, well, it was. And uh, they had the second chance, which went just wide. Uh, but yeah, it was a great save from McNabb. And uh, if they'd gone 2-0 down after a couple of minutes, it would have seemed like a very, very long road back. Yeah, the games, uh, both teams are settling in now. Nerves have gone. A little bit more possession for um, three power, but they just can't break 2-3 uh, down. Mention for you tonight, Jimmy, from Harry Fryer. Who's watching on uh, on Facebook? Hello, Harry. Um, he, he'll be disappointed not to be here this evening. Um, having spent 12 years in the parachute regiment and three paras, his battalion. So um, good to see him supporting from uh, from afar. Here's Vincent. Through ball again, cut out well by three para, but the danger not over yet. Callum Vincent chasing hard for it and wins. Gets the ball out of play for the, the throw in. That's good defensive work from him. And Josh Monroe says, my little brother is Jack Monroe, number 17, three para. Hopefully he comes on soon. I think you may have to wait for a, a wee while, uh, Josh, for that to happen. You could do with an extra player, I think, John, <laughs> if they're allowed to bring him on. Bit of head tennis going on in midfield. Vincent looking for that, and that was actually Fitzmaurice. What is pleasing to see, John, is the... Is the um, both units have invested in this. They've both got new kits for this occasion, names on the back of the shirt, even the staff have got new coats. Even manager Sammy Lawson looks good in the coat. Yeah, there was a mention for coats early on. Have you got anything to do with that at all? <laughs> have you got anything to do with the jackets? Because uh, there was a, a special mention for you when we were before we went live about the, about the coats. But yeah, it's a very smart kit they're both wearing. <laughs> Oh, that's a lovely one too. Brilliant play oh, from the Sappers. Here's Core. Oh, and it's so a really disappointing final ball, isn't it? But yeah. lovely interplay between Vincent and Core there. A break on here from three power. Mm. So three power. This is such an open game now. Brilliant. Out wide to Elwood. He needs support. Can he get he's the cross in? He's no. He's still cross. going. Nathan Elwood. Ball goes back to the number four to Baisley. Nice cross in, right dealt with by the defence, but danger not over yet. Crompton bringing it clear. This Here's is the Tandy. thread, the composure of the Vincent. Sapper unit. Apart from that one, typically. No, that's good recognition from uh, from Liam Silver there, recognising that um, it was two versus five at the back, so just kept hold of the ball, laid it back. Um, Sadly, Elwood does well to keep in. it in. Great He's still play. going. Getting to the byline. Is he going to go on his own? He needs support. And he's got it. Here's Tandy again. Gets the shot oh, in. Shot, first shot and it's just wide. Right. It's Dominic Wormsley with the shot there. But uh, that'll, that'll help the three para because it's really their first serious attempt on goal. Yeah, Elwood again. He, he's done great play down the right. Um, he's done well against the, the left back core. And he's pulled it back. He needed a bit of support. And connected well it's just uh, off target but that'll give him promising signs now going into the uh, going into the next 20 minutes I'm sure but it remains 1-0 to the Sappers here made a brilliant start to this game scoring through Callum Vincent after just six minutes they have two real chances even before that one of which was brilliantly saved by Reese McNabb if you're just joining us we're live here on Forces News Facebook and also on our YouTube channel tonight it's been a a great day of military sport with the T20 cricket at Lords. Very sadly, having to be curtailed because of rain, stopping play oh, at the end. But good bit of hold-up play from Squires. Oh, there. Oh, what defending! Great emergency defending. 
And they're coming through again. Oh, and that's what a goal. Cracker. What a goal. What a oh, goal. my goodness me. That what a was finish. an absolute oh, and a celebration. About the celebration. Mark Kenny. Well, he came from nowhere and blasted it into the goal. Goal. No chance for the keeper. And that has levelled it at 1-1. It started with Jack Squires there, just keeping hold of the ball in the in the sort of central space, looking for uh, that perfect pass. Uh, well defended from 2-3, and then what, yeah, where did that rocket come from? Right in the in, in the in the uh, far corner, kept it nice and low. Keeper didn't. I'm not sure if someone was in the way of the keeper there, but um, hey, quality uh, quality goal from three para 1-1. Well, hey, I'll Mark. tell you what. Hey, Mark. Mark Kenny's not going to uh, forget that one in a hurry. I don't think any of us here in the, the stand here at uh, the military stadium will forget that for a while. We've seen some cracking goals over the years, but that is certainly amongst them. I mean, he must have what, been 35 yards out. Oh, yeah, it must have been. What a strike. He'll be asking uh, <laughs> he'll be asking for the footage for that over and over again, retweeting on his socials, I'm sure. What a strike. Norman yeah. absolutely stunned. Well, no chance for Felix Norman at all. Um, it was going like a rocket, like an exocet, wasn't it? It really was. Well, when I mentioned that save earlier from McNabb in the first couple of minutes, what I failed to say was, uh, you know, let's hope those two clear-cut chances by 2-3 aren't sort of... Um, yeah, they're not kicking themselves late on. Could be the case. Well, we've still got a long way to go yet. We've only just over... In fact, we are exactly halfway through this first half in a... A really exciting Army Cup final. What a terrific uh, first 22 minutes we've had here in Aldershot. Both teams really going for it. That's great play as well from Tandy. Yeah, it's we the had final that. ball letting him down. Yeah, we had that onslaught from the uh, the Sapa unit the first 15 minutes, and slowly um, the Parasite started to actually string passes together and keep the ball, and I think it's, it's paying off. But it's certainly opening up at the moment. The, the, made that switch in their priorities as you say of three para and it's looking good for them. that was a, another pretty hefty challenge on Vincent there ball goes wide in the outer left of the side of Simmers gets the ball across good defending great defending from uh, three para it's another corner to two three strong challenge there Surprised the referee hasn't had a word, but um, we said at the beginning it was going to be a feisty, well fought contest. That's two big fouls on Vincent now. Maybe they're targeting him as a bit of a playmaker that they want to nullify. Corner comes in and it'll be cleared away. And is that? That's a goal kick. Yeah, Simon Dean, I think, was looking for the corner there. He crept in at the far post there for a very good corner, floated in by Kyle Simmers, but uh, it uh, didn't come to anything in the end. So three para one, two, three engineer regiment, one, this all airborne forces final. Both of these teams coming over from East Anglia to compete here in Aldershot today. I think we have had, a, as you say, a coach load, a bus load of Paris supporters have come here to support them. From three Paris, and here they are on the ball again. Trying to find that way through. But yeah, it's three Paris starting to look after the ball a little bit better now. I think they've known that the cost of being sloppy in possession is going to hurt them. Ball in for the number Great seven touch. for Waterhouse. Still going inside the box. It's flipped back and uh, collected though by Squires. Looking for the one two, but he's knocked off the ball, beaten to it by Dalton Crompton. And the ball's still in play. And uh, that will be back to the goalkeeper, Pete Dante, back to his goalkeeper. Oh, he's going to press. Good pressing, as you say, from the Sappers. Cleared away, out of danger. But this is a, a really even contest now. Here's Elwood again. Over again. 
Lovely Lots one two back. ball going Ooh, through. Well Great defended. defensive Great work. ball through, but well defended. But it's not over yet. Here's Waterhouse he's still going. Waterhouse gets to the byline. Oh, oh and he's won the corner. In trouble there on that left hand side. Waterhouse seems to be the one that can find space in the box, and he's, he's tricky feet. Um, he's earned a side of corner. Yeah, that was such an important tackle from uh, Alex Williams there, the right back. He was given, being given the run around, wasn't he there? But uh, regained his composure, managed to sort it. So corner then. It's their first corner for three Parrot. Voted in Free head. to the head. Oh, oh, clearance! Great header from Armour, and it was cleared. And on the break, not quite working for them. Warmsley. It's great for us how open this game. Oh, it's a terrific. Oh. That's another really hefty challenge. I think the ref's definitely got my word. This time not. on uh, Liam Silver. He'll be in the book for that. And that is going to be a yellow card, I think, for Stuart Mott. That's a Stu Mott tackle. I've known Stu a long time. <laughs> Trademark Mott tackle. <laughs> the Mott tackle. I should remember that one. That was a good corner delivered there as well. Um, three power getting on the end of it, but well defended. Goal line uh, clearance or goal line ish clearance from uh, two three defender. He was. It's great we have people queuing up, you know, to be co commentators. Uh, a few comments about the fact we haven't got uh, Sean Woolley with us tonight, but I'm sure Sean will join us at some stage. Uh, we've got. Uh, the, uh, the court, the yeah, uh, you, know, you, you and him together were quite a combination for that under-23 match uh, a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, the, the meeting of the Army, the RAF and the Royal Navy, if you remember. Uh, <laughs> I think he's otherwise, he's, he's busy this evening, I think. He's busy, uh, he's, he's busy. He's busy. He's on a curfew, isn't he? But, <laughs> I don't know. Free kick then to the Sappers, headed clear though into the path of Elwood. And well played. Nathan Both Elwood still going. Going out of there. It's a bit of a soft foul for me, that one. Well, if you just joined us, you missed a, a cracking equaliser for three para just a few minutes ago. Absolute corker from Mark Kenny. Uh, replying to a very early strike from, uh, say, a strike from Callum Vincent. I mean, he was light, sort of no yards out to put the ball in the back of the net to give 2-3 uh, the lead. And that's another fairly hefty challenge. Not scared Again, of these challenges, are they? Silver. And I think that's going to be maybe another yellow card, is it? It's certainly a severe talking to, I think. Um, they're certainly taking a bit of a hit, these uh, two forward men for the sappers and uh, it is going to be a yellow I think it's Ryan Amor Ryan in the book Amor. yeah so Amor so that's now two of their central defenders are in the book mm. they're going to have to be pretty careful aren't they for the rest of this game quite risky especially if they're in a position where they're having to defend Tandy and the, the attacking threat as they were in the first five minutes So, another free kick then for... This could be a target ball for Mike Williams. And he is on the end of it, and uh, it goes harmlessly wide in the end, but um, you're absolutely spot on there, Jimmy, with that one. It's ambitious, isn't it, to try and score from there? I know he's got a big head, old Simon Dean, but um, <laughs> I don't think it was going to go in from there. I think half an hour gone, one each, three power will definitely be the happier of the teams um, it, going into the last 15 minutes of the first half. Yeah, I mean, they'll be relieved as much as anything. I think that they've managed to pull it back to... Uh, Great run. So here Great they go again. In. Looking dangerous going He's down the middle. It. Yeah, just a little bit too much there. It was uh, good defensive work from the men in maroon. That's lovely play again from their left back from Matty Court. Still challenging, but uh, winning out is Stu Mott. Ryan Waterhouse, and this is the man they want on the ball. And here he is on the edge of the penalty area, gets the ball in. It's well cleared, though. 
by the Sappers. Once more, it's Wormsley. So open this game. Pitch looks good as well, Jim. What do you think? Yeah, we definitely had a bit of rain. Uh, it's uh, looking in good, Nick. Um, played on it a week ago for the Army Crusaders in our final um, West of London Vets League uh, game. Sadly, it was a double header. We won the first game. We needed to win both to promote, but um, it's it's a good pitch, um, nice and big, and uh, a good playing surface for these guys to um, play the final on. Yeah, pitch looking in great condition. I was here actually a few weeks ago, they, and it's marked out with a, an automatic marker as a robot marker, pitch marker, which is fascinating. I've never seen it before. Yeah, I forget the name of the marker, but you're right, it is. The chap there, the groundsman, just has his mobile phone and just controls it, basically. So <laughs> Who needs humans these days? I know, I know. I'll be out of a job before too long. It's uh, 32 minutes played here, still 1-1 in this really open and entertaining yeah, army well final. again by Mott. Great play, look, he's going forward, driving the ball yeah, forward. Ball. Outside to Elwood on this right-hand side. Well, challenged so well challenged by yeah, Stu Mott, he, he, he's a good reader of the game he, he win the ball back and, and he'll drive forward um, just a shame that the, the sort of final delivery out wide uh, didn't have the quality that um, she would have would have wished for I think Mott dropping in there to help out his back line from the early Tandy threats actually worked really well for three para Tandy with the throw and it oh, goes hit the bar. The, hit the clock. Did it clip the crossbar? It looks like hit it the did. Back of the bar. Yeah. It's offside anyway, was it? Yes. No, no. I think it was. It was in plates. Um, yeah. The flag, has, the flag has gone up. So, is that for a goal kick? Yeah. It looks like it. Willie Thorne almost in there. That's Thorne again with the header. Vincent. And that was a 50-50 challenge there. Vincent uh, just laying something in on Ryan Armour there. And uh, the big number five gets the free kick. Good to see a few um, Army men senior team players coming to support the uh, event this evening. Next see Luke Kearney off to my left-hand side. Free kick goes in, safely gathered though by the keeper, by Felix Norman. Shadows getting long over this military stadium now from the main stand where we are broadcasting from tonight. Oh. Opportunity on the edge of the box here. Great work well then. Taken by Silver. From Silver again, goes down. Uh, right decision. Looking for the penalty, not given. That will be given though, that free kick. Unnecessarily, really. Wormsley wins it. So the pressure relieved for three para. Both teams, as you can imagine, anyway, you know, have got that high intensity desire to win the ball back, is making this uh, a very hot potato, constantly turning over, fouls. Oh, an opportunity for three para. Great Good save from the keeper. Oh, he's just screwed it. Well, it was Dante who was in there again. A lot of gaps in this Sapper's defence. Giving it back. He has, and here's Dante again. This time to Wormsley. It's a three power, far more composed now in, in, than, than the very early stages. Squires and Thorne. Lovely play. And Elwood, yeah, nice play in. from them. He's needs a bit of support. Squires again. That's well done. He's a good player, that uh, And Squires. that will go to the hands of the goalkeeper. By the way, gentlemen, you have been asked if you will uh, select the player of the match later on, so I shall be asking you for that, maybe for a joint decision a bit later on. I'm sure you'll be keeping it's a note of some of the... It will, it's, goal, yeah, it? for the candidates, but... Uh, I think the, the key players at the moment, seven for um, three para, Waterboy, I think he's been a good threat. And then obviously uh, either either Tandy, Vincent and Silva doing really well for, for two, three engineers. 
And here they go on the sappers challenge being challenged on that far side of the field. Holding off the challenge at the moment, but here's Baisley. Good defensive work from the captain, Michael Williams. They're starting very, Great very strongly. Really again. going well, aren't they? Oh, oh and he sighed down there. And that will Dangerous surely be in as well. Yeah. Stuart Mott, brilliant run from him. I'm surprised that uh, a yellow card hasn't been shown there to uh, Simon Dean. But um, in fact, I think there is going to be a yellow card shown. And quite rightly, Simon Thorburn, the Royal Signals, I think he's going to be the third man going into his book. <laughs> yes, another, Simon Dean. Another good run by Mott there. Um, and this is a, a dangerous situation here, Dan dangerous position for the Squires, Sappers. Is it? Squires over it? Yeah, Squires. Yeah, Jack Squires. I'll get Kenny on at me. <laughs> After that first one, he'll be, uh, he'll be bang up for it. So four men in the wall being pushed back by referee Thornton. Norman's got the wall. He seems to have the wall as he wants it. Squires then with the free kick straight into the wall. Did its job. Here's Baisley again. We'll thread that ball wide. And it'll be a bit of a run. He's done well to win it back. Yeah, yeah. and he's, I oh, think goal kick. he's gone for the goal kick. Yeah. Well defended, used his body to shield the ball left. You can see there, Baisley wasn't, he wanted to play into space, but they, they just weren't on the same page there with Elwood wanted it more to feet. I'd definitely get Kenny on the next uh, free kick after after Squire's uh, chance there. That's a nice bit of play, a nice touch then from Dean. Great run. Plays the ball wide onto the that right hand side. Can he get the ball in? Number Tandy. seven's uh, free. And he is free, oh, but it's it, just it. a bit too far for Dalton Compton. But good counter attacking play there from the Sappers. That's the first we've seen from them really in the, the last few minutes. And they'll be pleased to have got themselves you know, back on the attack again, because they've had to put up with quite a lot of um, defence in the last few minutes from uh, the Paras. <laughs> It'll make Ball's coming back into play nice uh, nice and quickly. I think a shout out to Farnham, t Farnham Town uh, under 12 for giving the ball boys this evening, keeping the ball uh, in play and the, and the game flowing. That's a good ball in again across. by uh, Vinny. Safe. Yeah. Safe hands from the goalkeeper. Yeah, no a problem for McNabb there. See both teams settling down now. It's nowhere near as frantic as that, that opening 15 minutes, that's for sure. Well, really, since uh, three para got the uh, the equaliser, and what a goal it was. It's one that we sure remember for a very, very long time. Crompton. I think going back to the start there, three power must have thought, oh my, we're in for a, a challenge today. But they've done well. They've done well. They've, they've steadied themselves down, as as Griff said. Mott going back into uh, the, the back line has, has helped. Um, and, and the nerves have gone. And we've got a game on. Yeah, two good teams here giving us a, a really excellent first half, of which we have around about five minutes left, plus whatever stoppage time. The referee decides we should have. It's certainly scored for goals, looking at 2-3's uh, quarter-final results, scoring 9, beating uh, Six Regiment 9-1, uh, and 3 para winning 6-0 in, uh, in their semi-final, so there's a potential for goals here. They know how to find the back of the net, that's absolutely right, Jimmy. Oh, and here's a chance and then for well. the Sappers, the goalkeeper ball will probably there. get Great there technique. first. Wrong, Liam Silver. Yeah, Tandy not quite in time but he may have a chance here again again he's in a good position to come out and collect that one they're playing such a high line aren't they such a high defensive line the paras it's 
Great to see both both sides seem to trust their keeper implicitly with um, playing the balls on the floor quite often to them. Silva, you get it back. Again, he's looking to play that deft little pass in to find Compton, but it's cleared by the Paras again. A bit of a midfield battle. Bit of jinking around. Nice play, though. Spreading the ball wide onto this left hand side with Crompton. Gets an early cross, but that's going to go over the bar. Yeah, another good. Good ball out wide by Silva there. Just lacked in quality in terms of getting the cross in in the end. Little mention here for you two from Keith Stubbs, referring to you as the sort of the Neville and, and Carragher of uh, our BFBS coverage tonight. So that's from uh, Keith Stubbs, who's watching uh, on BFBS TV over in Germany. He says, Come on, the Sappers. And, yeah, uh, Keith Stubbs, heavily involved in core football and has been for a long time, will be. Very interested in this. A lot of uh, core players playing out there today, and um, I'm sure he'll be rooting for the Sapper side. Yeah, Stubbs, he knows the uh, engineers guys well. Good evening, Mr. Stubbs. That'll be no problem at all for Felix Norman. Could do absolutely nothing at all to stop Mark Kenny's equaliser. It flew in from at least 35 yards out, right along the ground right into nestling into that left hand corner of his net yes Fitz Morris on the ball now finds perhaps, is perhaps a bit of game management now three minutes of normal time left you Not don't want to concede now do you before no. half time no. no but it'd also be an absolute brilliant time to score wouldn't it John I think um, to go in, in half time level at the moment is um as jimmy said there it would only favor the the three para para side i think at the moment given that onslaught of the uh first 10 minutes oh this could high and wide oh. into the hands of uh, reese mcnab that was shall we say speculative yeah. i thought he might have been regretting taking <laughs> his hat off <laughs> Ball out of play. When we get to half time, we've got plenty of things to to show you to keep uh, you with us at half time before the second half gets underway. Obviously, in the build up to the Army Navy rugby at Twickenham on Saturday, we've been out and about. And looking forward to seeing the grand old gentleman from the Royal Hospital Chelsea. But here come the Sappers once more. Nice play again from Silva. Silva, yeah. He's, he's looked so good, isn't direct. he? So direct. Starting, or starting, ending this sec first half where they started. Vincent with the, the cross there, aiming to find one of his players. But instead, it's the Paras who are coming forward. Nice control from Elwood. Cut that well, Core. Nice interception. Yeah, good play from Matty Core. Funny enough, he has just been called up for his core side. He's, he's recently involved in the Royal Engineers side, which is great. It's 1 1 here as we go into the last, well, into the last minute of normal time at the end of this first half. 1 1 between 3 para and 2 3 para engineer regiment. Well defended. Great defensive work yeah, from Core again. He's well. hurt he's, himself. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's done well at number three. Took a knock on his ankle, didn't he? By the looks. One minute of additional time there. Although One it seems to, to have gone out of uh, most league, uh, most league and cup um, formats. I think there is uh, it's extra time if it is level after the 90s. Yeah, extra time and penalties. Yes. It's been confirmed. That's what yeah. we'll have. Extra time. And indeed, there goes the half-time half whistle. Well, 
a terrific first time, I'm sure you'd agree, gentlemen, that uh, we've had bags of excitement. Uh, opportunities very early on for uh, two goals for 2 3 Power Engineer Regiment, but they did score after six minutes. Uh, the man who got the goal was Callum Vincent. He couldn't really miss, could he? <laughs> it was such a, uh, a close, but great work, uh, you know, from, from Dalton particularly, uh, getting the ball, Dalton Crompton getting that cross in, and uh, he put the ball in the back of the net. And then we had to wait uh, until uh, about 20 minutes halfway through that first half for a terrific equaliser uh, scored by Mark Kenny. Uh, great work. So, gentlemen, just your thoughts really as we uh, take a half time break. Um, yeah. It, it I wouldn't have expected this after the first couple of minutes, one each. Um, you know, I think three power will probably be the happier team going in. Um, young McNabb kept the minute. Um, yeah, let's see what happens in the second half. Indeed, and, and Griff, from your point of view, I mean, some been some outstanding performances so far from both sides. But good to, I mean, from a three power point of view, good to see how they got themselves back into uh, the match when they could easily have been, you know, three goals down. Yeah, and that would have been uh, a, a really deep mountain to climb if they were two or three goals down in them early early periods but credit to them they've they've got themselves back in the game they started to to move the ball a bit more uh, composed and and they they're back in the game from a, from a wonder strike uh, albeit but they have got themselves into the final third more often now and and we're set up for a great second half now yeah i think we're, we're a big expectation for a cracking second half but that is the half time score here it is a 1-1 between three para and two three para engineer regiment we'll be back of course uh, with the second half live for you here on forces news facebook and uh, our youtube channel but now we're going to delve into uh, some of our other sports news at the moment and uh, to start with uh, shirt presentation time a very special time for the uh, army rugby team presented with their shirts for Twickenham on Saturday at the Royal Hospital Chelsea. Gearing up slightly differently for Saturday's Twickenham clash with the Navy, Army players paying a visit to former soldiers, the Chelsea pensioners, picking up their match day shirts. <laughs> Finding out who's getting a game in the historic fixture, they're also brushing up on their own military history with a tour of Royal Hospital Chelsea from some of its veteran residents. The deadliest thing in this place is a Chelsea pensioner on one of those electric scooters. <laughs> Snakes make more noise. Back in uh, 1692, but they came in here, that's what they got. Nine buttons to the front of, of the Scarlet. Any idea why? Got nine buttonholes. <laughs> Guys, you've got to work with me. You've got to work with me. It's a really special moment to, to have the shirt presentation here, uh, sort of from, from the tour guides that we had today. I think it was over collectively 100 years service from, from the people presenting it. And what was really strong was the sort of the banter that's there from a, from a former serviceman. A uh, message from the Army Rubber Union is, is just thanks for their support throughout the season. They've been at our games all the way through uh, and hopefully we'll see them there again on Saturday. The sport's taking off at the hospital, with organised days out to games and even the formation of a walking rugby team, thanks to one or two trailblazers. Shush. They joke about me being the director of rugby because I've been pushing rugby here at the hospital for the last two years. The army invite us to all of their games and even if they don't invite me, I've got my own car, so we go anyway. To meet the team is something that... It, it, it never entered my head. It, it wouldn't have even gone... On, on a bucket list. It was really, really, I mean, it, 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 you're getting me close to it, but it's overwhelming. There were rumours that there'd be a game today and you'd be lining up your opposition team. Uh, we were ready, apparently bottled it. <laughs> Love that one. <laughs> the Army-Navy match is always one to go for, but I also meet a lot of old friends that, that I either played rugby with uh, for different units uh, and meeting up if you like for the third half. The Chelsea pensioners will be watching the army take on the Navy at the hospital's own cinema with 15 tickets reserved at the actual game, others travelling to Twickenham on their own accord. Now the players have received scarlet uniforms of their own, they're one step closer 
to the biggest game of the season. Stand by for the biggest fixture of the military sporting calendar. Of course, is the Army-Navy rugby match coming live from Twickenham with coverage starting at 1.30 on the Forces News YouTube channel. Make sure you tune in, there's gonna be a belter. As head coach for the Army rugby team, Andy Sanger helped steer the side to inter-service success and to victory at the inaugural International Defence Rugby Competition, the equivalent of the Military Rugby World Cup. Fast forward several seasons and following a 30-plus year career in the British Army with the Royal Engineers, the former Major landed a dream job with top English outfit Harlequins. He is now the head of well-being and performance sport. The army has definitely strengthened my ability to transition from what I did to what I do now. The skills that you learn, and it, it's, it's not necessarily the stuff that you might have on a piece of paper or a quality. It's more the soft skills, the ability to, to work well in a team, the ability to have difficult conversations while separating the personal aspect of it, the ability to understand about you know how important communication is and the clarity of communication being clear in what's expected of myself and others so yeah i know it's uh there's huge similarities and it's definitely helped you have a reputation here as being a fixer not just sorting out the players but their families as well yeah I, again similar key part of what i think has been with the military and the success here is we care about our people we look after our people um so in, in old military speak i would say there's definitely a welfare officer element to it he's just helping all the families the partners the, a lot of the foreign guys that come over make sure they're settled in he's the sort of conduit between players and coaches when the, the communication has broken down a bit there um, but personally what he's done for me over the years as well I can't thank him enough and I value him now as a friend not just a colleague and that's quite hard for me to say because I don't a have many friends and B um, like many people so uh, yeah, we, we would be lost without him. There is advice too for service leavers making the leap into the civilian workplace. Do not underestimate the strengths, the qualities that you'll have learned in, whether it be a short period of three to five years or 10, 15 or 33 as I have, the skills you've acquired will help you transition. And what I have seen is that society needs it. Organizations need the qualities that, that, that we can bring from service. Um, you, you know, within the British Army, Navy, Air Force. And of course, I know you've used your, your military background to call in a few favours. You've had Jamie Miller, the, the ex-Army skipper, fly in here with his Apaches. Yeah, that was, that was quite an exciting day, to be fair, as the, uh, as the Apaches were hovering over the training field. Um, yeah, and that was amazing. And again, that was a learning opportunity. That was around our leadership development. Because obviously, if you're an Apache pilot, you know, you're making pretty, pretty decisive decisions. A journey that started in an army recruiting office in Wales over 30 years ago has been packed full of military and sporting adventures. After a 30-year career in the Royal Engineers, both full-time and as a reservist, where he reached the rank of Staff Sergeant and with rugby in his blood, Jamie Doig is now the man in charge of turning out the Leicester Tigers players week in, week out. I was unlucky enough to get injured quite early on in my career, uh, or in my sporting career, uh, with the Royal Engineers Rugby League. 
Uh, and a doctor then turned around and said, well, why don't you go into management, stay within the, the sporting environment? Uh, it was something that I'd, I'd never thought of, probably never even dreamed of, but it's taken me back to being in that sporting environment and definitely keeping involved with good friends that you've, uh, you've joined the army with. Looking after players' kit comes down to his close connections with Andy Sanger, who was the Army's head coach. Darren Percy, who was the, um, the kit man at the time, had got a liaison role with Uruguay during the Rugby World Cup during the, uh, the England campaign, uh, which left a void in the, the, the Army setup for IDRC 2015. Lucky enough, uh, Andy had asked me to, uh, to come on board. Has it been sort of almost like a seamless transition, you know, moving from the military side of, of what you do to this level at the, at the very height of English rugby? I think you look at the, the military ethos and, you know, the, the hard work, the commitment, uh, the trust, the loyalty, you know, it all has that, uh, that role, whether you're in the military or whether you come into the sporting environment as I have or, or into any walk of life. You know, you've got to be trusted, you've got to be loyal to the people that you're with uh, and you know, there's, there's a certain amount of you just get on and do it. A week before the Army-Navy clash, Tigers meet Quinns at Mattioli Woods Welford Road for the last league game of the season. A chance for a quick meeting of friends and rivals. We have our monthly catch-up. Um, he's, uh, you know, as Andy always is, you know, he's, he's straight down the line, um, you know, and, and somebody that I, I respect really, really well. You know, he, he mentored me, he gave me my opportunity uh, at Harlequins while I was uh, doing resettlement. So, yeah, I spent six months with, with Harlequins before I came up to Leicester uh, and, and worked with the academy. So, yeah, it's... Um, uh, yeah, there'll be some rivalries, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a game, we'll shake hands at the end and then we'll wait uh, until next season to, uh, to review that rivalry. My, my thanks go out to, um, you know, more to the people that have supported me through, through my army career uh, and more importantly, the ones that have followed me uh, after life uh, in, the, um, uh, in the civil sector. You know, um, there's, there's been boys that have covered me while I've been on army uh, camps and, and tours. Uh, you know, they're the ones that have enabled me to be able to, to do what I'm doing today. So back here then live at the military stadium in older shots where the scores between three para and two three the para engineer regiment it's one one at half time both teams out on the field just waiting for the officials now to make their way they're just speaking their way now out onto the field to, to start the second half Ginny Blair and uh, Gowen Griffiths with me alongside in the commentary box and um, we've enjoyed a really good first half gentlemen I think uh, you've spotted there are going to be a couple of substitutions Jimmy yeah Keelan and Manon it looks like Squires uh, is, is going to sit the second half out I can't see who, uh, who the other chap is but um, change for three part half time so a few changes then being made by the Paras can't see any changes for the sappers at the moment obviously uh, bearing in mind that if this were to finish level uh, after 90 minutes we would go to extra time and penalties so maybe that's uh, in the minds of uh, the coaching teams as well here but uh, what a cracking first half that was wasn't it uh, and if you missed it well you missed a, a corker of an opening with the uh, two three para engineer regiment having 
two cracking chances literally inside the first minute where they could have taken the lead twice but they then did take the lead uh, with uh, a very well taken goal in the end Callum Vincent from very close range and then what an extraordinary uh, reply from uh, three para an amazing kick uh, really from probably about 35 yards out from Mark Kenny just hit the ball so beautifully so true which uh, Felix Norman in uh, the goal didn't have a, a chance to save at all and uh, it was an extraordinary goal I think it caught everyone on the hop here because we'd no one really expected him to be going from that distance out but uh, uh, low on the ground in the back of the net 1-1 one, one, and hit, that's where we are at half time yeah an outstanding start to that first half that first two three minutes I don't think three para knew what had hit them but they've done well to come back in uh, and, and as you say a, a really good goal to get themselves level and even match so far and we're off again we are indeed and I just wonder whether we're going to see more of the same at the beginning of this second half a frantic opening but uh, both teams pretty measured towards the end of the first half maybe just getting the measure of each other uh, and uh, certainly for three para they will as you, I think you said Jimmy at half time I think they were probably the happy be the happier of the two camps just bearing in mind that they came back from a what could have been a disastrous opening yeah yeah definitely um be interesting to see what the, the team talks were at half time. I think the engineers would have focused on their first five minutes and, and trying to repeat those patterns and, and that sort of uh, level of performance. But the free kick then to the Paris, which is going to be taken by Lewis Baisley. What about uh, 30 yards out here on this near side of the field? Lots of people in the box there. All the big central defenders have gone up. Basie then with a, a lower free kick. Takes oh, the deflection. Oh. Oh. And that was just wide from Ryan Waterhouse there. Very, very nearly an exciting opening to the second half. Yeah, the delivery wasn't too great, but um, like much of this game, it's who, who can get to that second or that third bouncing ball first. And uh, three power got, got a shot off again, and it worked well for them in the first half. I think that if he connects correctly and gets that on target, that's 2-1. Here's Vincent. Out onto this right side to Crompton. Trying to beat his defender. Good defensive work, yeah, well though. well defended there. He didn't really go diving in. Mark Kenny. Showed him out scorer. wide. Yeah, the goal scorer. Uh, and he'd done what you'd want a defender to do. He stopped the cross. Well done. But it is a corner. Early doors then in the second half to the Sappers in their all-maroon kit. Like that. That's their third corner of this match. So the first one in the second half. There's Mike Williamson coming forward again. It is clear though. I three para. Ball goes wide. Then onto this right hand side to Silver. Offside. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Dalton Compton, do, his trying, run. Trying to just slide him in there. I think he just got ahead of himself with the yeah. run and it delayed the pass. His run Kept was all just... Kept the ball uh, a second too, uh, too long there. Yeah. You see three power. have got more bodies forward now in every every phase of play they're going for. Yeah. Vincent, nice ball through, and the chase on, goalkeeper comes, makes well the challenge. That's, uh... He's done all right, McNabb, hasn't he? He has. He has, that's, that's another crucial save that he made there, he had to get there first. I thought he this... just timed his run a little bit too late there. He's already so open this game. Here's Wormsley on this right-hand side. He'll take eventually the clearance. <laughs> Yeah, McNabb hesitated a little bit there, and, and in the end, <laughs> a little bit worrying, but he, he got the ball, fair and square. Another free kick, another foul on Callum Vincent. Yeah. And he's gone down again this time. He took a, a hefty knock in the first half from a couple of, um, shall we say, meaty challenges. And he's got up again, hobbling away. He's certainly been identified, hasn't he, as uh, a danger man, and... Uh, he did have an opportunity like, like he has in the first half though, just to release it a little bit quicker. Well, 
Referee says that's a free kick. Our officials this evening, Simon Thorburn, his referee from the Royal Signals with Steve Timms and Harry Scott, his assistants, and uh, Barrington Ellison. Baz Ellison is the fourth official. Stood there right on the halfway line at the moment. One one in this early moments of the second half here in the 122nd Army Cup final. Certainly a different opening five minutes to this half and what yeah. it was in the first half, that's for sure. There have been chances though. Yeah. And the yeah, opportunity now thing. for Crompton going forward. He's looking for some support. Takes the ball wide. Got a couple of people to challenge, but he's still got the ball. Still doing very well. Oh, Does well extremely done. well. well to hold Alex it. Williams. Vincent, lovely play from him. Beats one man, beats two. Crompton again. Vincent will take the ball into the corner. Got a good challenge from Baisley. Snuffs that one out. But again, Callum Vincent, he's got the touch, hasn't he? Very good touch, very good player. A uh, bit of a flair player. Often takes too many touches in the wrong times, but um, he's going to be a great prospect in Army football for sure. Yeah, I've been impressed with him this season when he's come into the senior team. Um, sadly, wasn't available much around the inter service, but as Griff said, talent for the future. Well, you both are very much the best judges of uh, what's going to be seen in the army setup over the next uh, couple of years. So, a great opportunity for you to see them tonight great in action as well. Tandy there, just got a little bit muscled off there by the big five. That's a brilliant ball cross field from Dante. What can three para do with this? They've got bodies in the box as well, if they can get across. It's a bit of a challenge there on that far side, and they will win the corner. Corner, well done from uh, Amor. There, just uh, nice and calmly stealing the ball in his own third, and, and just, again, calmly passing the ball forward to a breakout from the right. Um, almost getting the cross in, but they've won a corner. Very quickly taken, and it's a brilliant uh, defensive right, header there. Yeah, well defended. Yeah, Dean did really well, and he's down at the moment, this Simon Dean, being pulled to his feet by uh, Fitzmorris. Frank, Frankie Fitzmorris. be interesting to see when them tired legs creep in, because I'm sure both sides haven't been used to uh, the tempo of a, of a fixture like this, uh, leading up to this game, for sure. And it is a huge pitch here, isn't it, the military stadium? Big, big pitch. Probably a bigger surface than they're used to playing on as well. This 2023 Army Cup final. Wormsley. Nice. Great play. Nice one too. Wormsley gets it back from Thorne. Out to Kenny. He's done well since he's come on, man. Back to Thorne. Oh, he switched it. Unlucky. Too far. Unlucky. Yeah, he's, he's come on and offered uh, a little bit more energy. Um, 14 that, that did start the first half. Um, very composed on the ball, but just lacked that mobility to get around where man's come on and he's yeah. uh, he's buzzing around in that midfield for sure yeah louis man we'll see whether those substitutions uh, have any effect but it is uh, absolutely neck and neck at the moment nip and tuck between these two teams you just think is it going to be a, a mistake somewhere that's going to let in one or other of these teams You don't want to. You don't want to hope for that, do you, John? But no. it's, it, you know, sometimes it can be that that lack of concentration in important fixtures that can define cup finals. There's one thing for sure: both teams are here to to, to win it, and, and they're playing direct. And um, yeah, it just adds yeah, for an, an exciting game. A little bit, isn't it? The football's in the centre of the park. Stops. And the man down is Matty Core again. I think he just fell awkwardly, didn't he, when he was going for that header? He'll be up and about, I'm sure, in a moment. Don't want to miss a moment of this final. Not to his feet now, which is good to see. But the throw-in is to 
three parrot in their white shirts, green shorts. Nice work from Tandy. Win himself a he's foul fouled. There. Yeah, wins Just the free kick. his body in the way, and he's forced three power to make a bit of a rash, um, rash challenge there to give away a cheap foul. Just reminding Griff there of our responsibility to choose the man of the match this evening. Uh, I wonder if anyone online could uh, drop a comment and help us. But for me, um, from the engineers, I think uh, old Callum Vincent is a standout player for that team, and, and number eight. Um, Wormsley. Wormsley is a stand up for, for three power so far. Well, be interested to know what you think at home if you're wherever you're watching tonight. And thanks indeed for tuning in and joining us. On great, to that play. great play from the number 11 down that far great side. Defended. Yeah. Well defended yeah, that. Stu Mott using his experience again Carl there. Simmons. And here's an opportunity oh, for. Just. That must have been really tight. Ryan Waterhouse just getting his run slightly wrong. Backs up what Griff said, though. There's there's no play in the midfield anymore. It's just uh, let's shell it forwards and uh, get it to our front players. Indeed. And it almost worked. There's a Didn't match winner somewhere, though, in there. There's uh, someone's going to pop up and be the match winner. I'm sure. Um, that might that might define the uh, man of the match award for us. Well. Just keep that in mind, gentlemen. It will be a, deci a joint decision. Here's Silver, who's impressed me as well tonight. Uh, tonight, Liam Silver, uh, the number yeah, ten. I remember Silver first coming into the engineer setup, 17 years old, and he, he is just like what he is now. Uh, very direct, energetic, skillful, tenacious, and uh, yeah, he's definitely having his own stamp on this game. It's Dalton Crompton though with the, the throw-in, going long into the penalty box, headed clear, and collected by Wormsley. And uh, he clears his lines. So the sappers then with Alex Williams. It's a bit of cat and mouse at the moment between these two teams. Referee says play on. Crompton still going. Vincent you need to try and switch it left. Yeah, he has. Oh, so left hand side to Simmers. Oh, he's oh, just he's first him down there. Get the ball down. Uh, and it's a goal kick. Great for the defender to get across, straight and press. And just to remind you as well, the football doesn't finish tonight as well. We've got the RAF Cup final uh, live for you tomorrow from Oxford City Football Club. I'll be there from uh, quarter to one tomorrow, the one o'clock kickoff. Looking forward to uh, to that game and uh, the two teams involved, uh, RAF Cosford, the RAF current champions, they'll be playing RAF Boomer, who haven't made the final since the year 2000. So that's going to be uh, an RAF Cup final tomorrow on the all-weather pitch there at Oxford City. Join us if you can tomorrow from a quarter to one. Oh, oh. Good clearance. But back to this Army Cup final here tonight in the military stadium in Aldershot. 1-1 between these two teams. Almost an hour played of this game. A bit cat and mouse at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I just wonder if three power come out second half and realise that actually... Oh, here we go. In. And the chance then for the number nine. Oh. Tucks it in. Oh, 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 again, again. Just wide. Ashley Tandy. Well... If I recall, he was the one who put the ball wide in that first minute of the first half. Yeah, it was, yeah, 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 it was a good save time there. To him. Yeah, man, uh, wrong. McNabb getting a, his fingertips of that and forcing it onto the post. Great shot by Tandy. It's it really Tandy was. again, and not many are going to beat him in a foot race, but credit to the defender for just maybe slightly putting him off and forcing him wider. Wormsley. The number three takes a pop oh! shot and he hits the woodwork. From My three power me. pulls to T3 engineer bar. What excitement here. That was Dante with the shot there. Hit the angle of crossbar and post. So as you say, the woodwork has been struck within the space of just a few seconds by both teams. Only in the Army Cup final, eh? Well, it's certainly livened things up here. What was a, a fairly close battle has suddenly opened out. And here's Silver. Yeah, both teams reminding each other that they're here to win. Oh, definitely. Which is good to see. Yeah. Vincent. 
Oh. Well, it was worth a try, wasn't it? Yeah. Substitution again for three para. And the 15 Hughes coming on. Good evening to Linda Thorne, who's She's watching as well. Lady. Shane Robinson. And uh, he says, put Monroe on. There's the left back coming off, I think. Jack what Monroe, a number 17. There. And there is another yeah, change. Mark being Kenny, made. the goal scorer, going off there. Yeah, number eight. 15. Dan Hughes. Dan Hughes coming him. on. I think it's the first time I've ever seen in uh, military football uh, the, the names on the back of the players' shirts, which uh, makes our life a bit easier, doesn't it? Even though we are miles away from the uh, the pitch here in the military stadium. That's great to see, and as, as uh, Griff again. pointed out, you know, both units clearly investing in, in unit football, which is proof of them both being in the final this evening. Most definitely. And here's Ormsley. Just a little chip forward. The big softy shoes. Oh, well defended again. Well read. Hughes, not quite there. Yeah, Ooh. he could late be in the book for that as well, maybe. Just a little bit late. He's been quiet in the second half. Um, I thought he had a very bright first half. Water has. Just a quiet word from the referee. Good meaty challenges going in. Being played in a great spirit this final. There's Man again. As Griff points out, getting yes. stuck into this game and standing out a little bit in the second half uh, as a second half substitution. Yeah, he's come on with a very positive difference, hasn't he? Certainly trying to work their way through, but uh, what can 2 3 Para do here for the Sappers? Half an hour to go. Could go anywhere this game. Yeah. It really great, could. great to watch there, isn't it? One end, you've got a great save tipped onto the post, and then 10 seconds later, the crossbar's been struck on the other end. Game's still level. Yeah, absolutely, 1 1. Couldn't be closer. Both teams, though, really going for it. And here's so for them, great Tandy. Lovely ball out onto the si side. Great ball in. Switch oh, up, and oh. it's there! Oh, it's put away. The keeper, and and engineer was there to pounce and yeah. put it in the, gut, in the back of the net. He just one. crept in, didn't he, at the back there to put the ball delivery. in the net. Wow. It, was a, it was a great like a goal. Concentration there. Centre back left it. Goalkeeper won't be happy there. He not, did, and it was not after the game he's had so far with that Ashley save Tandy. in the first half and, and the save uh, ten minutes ago, tipping the ball onto his post. He's going to be annoyed at his defender there. So Ashley Tandy creeping in there at the back post to put the ball away and give 2-3 Para Engineer Regiment the lead once again. Again, nothing at all the goalkeeper could do about it. No, great, great drive from Silva, central area. Played the ball out wide, an in-swing and cross, which made it hard for the defender. Defender lapsed of concentration and then Tandy was there. Couldn't miss. Um, I think a lack missed. of concentration as well, but a well-taken goal by Tandy, another army player on the score sheet. But the straight away, three para on the attack, looking to get back into this game again. They've done it once. No reason at all why they can't do it a second time. But this game, this game is going to just spread out so much now. Now we have a second goal for the para engineers. Here they go once more. It's good pressure from Waterhouse yeah, again. Do, yeah. Can yeah. he Cut find inside. another three? A good def defensive block. Oh, Here comes so the number good. eight through. Great faint. Gets the oh, shot in. That's a brilliant save from shot, Felix Warman. Save. Yeah, great work again. Dominic Wormsley, the captain, going through, getting the shot in. And that was a terrific save from uh, Felix Norman there. Yeah, he's set up to strike it. He's just dropped the shoulder, fainted. I think it was Mike Williams that dived in. Worms, he got himself a striking opportunity and what a save at the near post from uh, Phoenix Norman. So Elwood then will take the corner. Just proves three para not out of this game. Absolutely not. 
They will certainly fancy their chances of getting another goal. And they get another corner. You can see two, three engineers now all about defending these threats. Now they can see the light at the end of this tunnel there. What, 35 minutes away from an Army Cup victory. Yeah, and their first appearance in the major units final. They did as nine squadron win the minor units final. That was back in 2004. Corner That's a poor in. corner. Yeah, Waterhouse, oh, he'll, he'll get another chance. And he puts a, a better, much better, better cross, cross in. in. It's headed clear. Oh, Eventually. Well defended. Sandy, Sandy could be away here. Yeah. He's got the pace. The There's a break on from two, three and engineers. Vincent is wanting it in the middle as well. Paris sprinting back. Here's Crompton. Gets he's in. Cross oh, he's in. in. Oh, oh, and he's unlucky. put the ball wide. Corner. Yeah, it's a corner. That was Fitz Morris who Frank charged yeah. through there. He maybe will have felt he could have done a bit better with that one. He had a bit more time than maybe he thought he had. Yeah, I, I, in his defence, I think the ball spun up a little bit. Defender coming across, but yeah, like you said, you're, you're in the box, what, 10, 12 yards out. You should be at least hitting the target. And that would have been uh, a step further to this victory. Well, it's going to be... Liam Silva to take the corner on that far side of the field but the airborne sappers leading 2-1 here in this in army again. cup final headed clear eventually it'll back come up. back to Silva again inside the box oh, goes oh. down oh. well that says no and they're on the counter attack oh, well, well defended again by foul. Williams yeah. <laughs> yeah. done well there Mike Williams yeah well I don't think it was a penalty. He went down a little bit too easily for my liking. Yeah. We've got Andy Halliday sat in front of us. He could have been on board duty this evening. Yep. We'll maybe get, get a, a referee's view on that. <laughs> a little bit later, but uh, no. The referee's decision is final. And the danger's still not cleared, yes. For the oh, oh, that's that's a that is a penalty. Yeah, there we go. That is holding. That's a penalty. And I think if this goes in, it's game over. Well, I don't think the Paris can have any complaints about that. I was in that clothesline on the uh, WW, WWF when I was growing up. <laughs> so, an opportunity then to put some clear... Callum Vincent looks like he's stepping up. Water. Oh, mind games from McNabb there, coming up yep. to the, the, the penalty spot. Is it going to work for him? He's pulled a couple of good saves off, so he has. Yeah. I'm going to back him here. Callum oh. Vincent, under-23s, set-piece taker all of last year. Didn't miss didn't miss any of these, didn't miss any free kicks either. Commentary curse, perhaps. He it is. Us. We saved it. I think I called that one, lads. Uh, Jimmy, that was yeah. a commentator's curse. <laughs> Sorry, Callum. Well, it wasn't a very good penalty, but yeah, it was a on. very good save, nevertheless. Credit to the goalkeeper, yeah, he's gone the right way and he's, he's kept it out. And I think he needed to, because that game could have been wrapped up with a 3-1 lead if that was to be oh well, that says play on then. can't take your eyes off this one for a moment can you so a very good evening Thank to you. Jamie Doig a little feature on Jamie a bit at half time which hopefully you saw Jamie going out and also to Andy Sanger as well to you can see that penalty save given three power a huge boost you can hear it on the pitch well. Yeah, they, they can't afford any more mistakes, so they've had to one cost them, and they got away with that last one in terms of the penalty. McNabb keeps them in it again. He does. Well, one of his nicknames, Andy. <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll have him to thank if they do get something out of this game. So, 2-3 Engineer Regiment leading, 3 para by 2 goals to 1 as we approach. There's the experience from Felix minutes. Norman slowing the game down there. Oh, Alex Williams playing it safe there. They're he, not taking any risks. Has he pulled sure. something? I just wonder he's, he's gone down there. Along the way. I think it's cramp. Yeah, you're right. It most certainly is. 
I know manager Sammy Lawson will be uh, over the moon and his assistant Steve Richards. I know they've um, enjoyed having this blend of youth. Breath of fresh air, Sammy Lawson described it. He'd be keen to get his teeth into this side for the future. He will indeed. Just a little break in play while uh, Alex Williams just recovers after that bout of cramp. Seems to be okay now. Waterhouse then with the throw in. Ryan Waterhouse on this left hand side goes for the long throw Water into throw. the box. No nonsense stuff from Simon Dean. A long throw in from Waterhouse there. Not really maximised though. Corner ball, is it? Yeah, it will yeah, be a corner. corner. Another corner kick then to three parrot. Trailing by a goal here, two one in favour of the airborne sappers. This first ever air all airborne That's final. Corner deep, a bit too deep for everybody. I'd say it's a good delivery there, but no. You'll, you'll see uh, Phoenix Norman want to slow this right down now. Momentum tilt slightly. He'll just want to take the fizz out of the uh, out of the game. Well, he made a crucial save. A crucial save, didn't he? Just after uh, the Sappers regained the lead, uh, and with that missed penalty as well, they've certainly had their chances uh, of two, three. But here Great pass. come the Paras, and here's Pete Dante on this right-hand side. Oh. The ball split to the left, oh, to the right, and that eight. is in the back of the net. Two. It is 2-2. Two, two. Well, a bit of a catastrophe there amongst the sappers. There was a good cross in there, and the, the, the three-par yeah. lad just couldn't get it out of his feet, but not sure who scored in the end. Yeah, he, I can tell you who it was. It was actually Ryan Waterhouse who put the ball in the back of the net to give the, the, uh, the paras... Equality again. Just so under 20 minutes to go. Game Ryan Waterhouse with the goal. Yeah, their captains come to the rescue when they've needed him most. Great play, great sliding ball down the side. Cross has come back in. And because um, he's hit it early with so many bodies in the box, it's caused a bit of a problem for Norman. Um, he seems to be juggling the ball into the bottom corner. And here they go one, one more time. Here's Waterhouse again. And it's 3 2. No, oh. it isn't. Oh, how on wow. earth did he miss that? I think he should have took that clearing. himself. How did Willie Thorne miss that one? Open goal. I'm not sure he would have been offside there, actually. What but, a game uh, is this? What a game. I think Waterhouse should have just took that himself and tapped it in with his left foot. Well, he could easily have done, but he laid it on the plate and he was missed. Anyway, the corner comes in. Good goalkeeping. Yeah, and how Norman on gets it, so, yeah. it clear. It's 2-2. Two, two. Oh, he's in. Oh. Well, this is terrific entertainment for the fans who are here, and hopefully you're enjoying it at home as well. A terrific game of football here. What a credit to military football this is. Here's Dominic Wormsley. Three para definitely finding that extra player up front now. Getting closer to their centre forward is, is causing them two, three engineers a problem. They've not made any changes yet, of course, in their lineup, and that is going to be a free kick conceded. What was by what I was thinking there? Liam Silver. <laughs> yeah, he, he could have put two, three para ahead there. Well, he laid it on a plate for Thorne. His defence maybe he thought the. His teammate was in a better scoring opportunity, but um, yeah, not to be. Defender right, right up his backside, and uh, was there to clear it away. A lot of support coming in for three para, but a, a change now being made by the Sappers, and Depression Ting is coming on for them, wearing number 15. And the man who's coming off is Alex Williams, who, of course, suffered from a bit of cramp a few minutes ago. We wonder whether that's the reason why he's coming off. So 
So Sapatin comes on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. I think they've identified that three power are getting that joy from that area and they've just wanted um, Ting to come on and freshen things up a bit. Yeah, maybe shore up that little uh, bit of a gap. Well, goodness knows which way this game is going to go. It's, uh, it's so exciting here into the, the last 15 minutes of normal time. So we could be here for quite some time to come. Silver, really great from, from Silver. Well read again by Mott. Time and again, he's done it. Here we go. And here we go with uh, it. Dante. Oh, he's oh. put it wide. Would you believe it? He had, he had time there what as well. What a chance. What a chance. He's holding his head. Uh, I'm not surprised. What an and, opportunity. And ten minutes ago, we had Callum Vinton stepping up to make it potentially 3 1. And now we've had uh, two clear opportunities from three power to go two goals ahead. Excellently read by Stu Mott to intercept the ball again and a lovely ball through. Um, as Griff said, open chance there to make it 3 2 for three power. What a cup final, John. That's brilliant. Fantastic cup final. And I hope that you're enjoying it at home as much as we are here because uh, it's uh, it's been terrific entertainment from uh, from both of these teams. And, uh, you know, I, I uh, well, <laughs> have no idea which way this one's going to go. <laughs> oh, it could go anyway, this. <laughs> sort of game that you just don't want to come to an end. But we will have a decision tonight. Here's Hughes. Nice ball out Great from ball. Ormsley. Great ball again. I Looking think for Waterhouse. Been brilliant this second half. Good kick. Yeah, and that goes for a goal kick. Don't We've envy got you, gentlemen. Else down in the, in the box again. Cramps definitely yeah, kicking in. Race. I don't envy you, gentlemen, with the uh, decision to make it of choosing the player of the match. I must admit. Have we got any help from? Uh, <laughs> have, we, have we got any any help from the? viewers watching at home John well I think they're all there's a, there's a lot of names being mentioned but lots of different names I suspect there's a bit of sort of family loyalty creeping in amongst our viewers yeah. uh, they'd like to see players of the match I think the second half um, I think Wormsley the skippers definitely led from example not just this goal there, but just them, them balls over the top are causing problems. And you can't count Stu Mott out either, but those Stu through Mott balls sure, that yeah. he played. And also, Liam Silver has really caught my eye for uh, the, the, the Sappers tonight as well in the second half. I think he's been terrific. And you can't forget the goalkeeper for keeping them in <laughs> at a crucial stage as well, McNabb. As I said, I'm glad it's not me who's going to be selecting the player of the match. <laughs> Another man Chris down. Maurice looks like he, he might need to come up. Second time he's gone down now. Yeah. It's the Simon Dean, isn't it? The uh, big central defender. I oh, know it isn't. It's uh, Fitzmaurice. It's Fitzmaurice, yeah. yeah. Frankie Fitzmaurice. Looks like he is going to be replaced by Juan Papa. He's done well, though. I think he's had a good game. It's been a bit of a slog for them central midfielders. He'll be gutted, he's, he's having to come off. It looks like it's it's forced for this injury. He's in on the other side, couldn't bring it down. Well, it's going to be about stamina, isn't it? I think these last 15 minutes, who, who's going to win this game? Oh, Great what a touch. touch. Excellently touch. defended as well. Oh, oh here we go. For him. Waterhouse. Oh, oh, puts it over the bar. But again, closed down brilliantly Good by Felix Norman. From Norman there. Yeah, yeah. Good cross in, an excellent touch in the box there. Well defended. And uh, number seven there, Waterhouse picking up scraps, but Norman doing his job. We spoke about the uh, two, three engineers potentially missing an opportunity to go ahead. I think um, three power could be kicked themselves if they don't end up winning this game. Agreed, yeah. Well, to be fair, both sides have missed 
you know, chances with the, the two chances that went begging for the, the sappers very Great early pass. on in this game. But Great it football. looks to me like three para are the stronger of the two at the moment. Corner, 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 and they win a corner. Getting, yeah, yeah. Seems, to be, uh, seems to be working for them on that right-hand side. A good switch of player there. Good ball in. Again, well defended, doing his job, stopping the cross, but a th three para corner. It is indeed Jason Keelan. He's come on as one of the substitutes. He played for me back in the infantry days, uh, did Jason Keelan. Well, he's taking the corner. He won the corner. It's a lovely in swing. It goes on, and Waterhouse almost on the end of it. Does get a touch, but no problem really to the Sappers goal there. And Felix Norman will be quite relieved about that, I'd imagine. So, 10 minutes of normal time to play in this. 2023 Army Cup final. And what a terrific game it's been. And of course, if it stays like this, we go into extra time and then the penalty, dreaded penalty shootout. In a way, you kind of hope it's not going to get that far. Here's Keelan again. That's a nice ball through, being chased by Dante. Mann back on the ball there, two substitutes combining, Keelan and Mann. And that is going to be a free kick. Late challenge from Matty Kaur there. I've had some good deliveries from uh, three par into the box there, but just the starting position from the players, um, they need to be reading the game a little bit more, so I'd like to see a bit of adjustment here, see if they can meet the, uh, the, the delivery. And Kaur is going to go into the book for that one. And you can see Waterhouse's position, maybe that's uh, exactly what he's thinking. Joshua Munro says, Waterhouse is everywhere. Go on, lad, he says. And uh, he says, just the boys winning will be enough to see. Come on, three para. That's Joshua Munro. He's still hoping that Jack's going to make an appearance. But uh, it's Jason Keelan who will take this free kick on that right-hand side. Norman's just setting his box up there. Yeah, it's a certainly man-to-man -man marking at the moment going on in the box. That's, and it was actually uh, Callum Vincent who headed it clear. Keelan again gets the shots. And from our angle here, it looked a bit closer than it probably was. Good pressure from 2-3 there. You know, switched on initially to force the ball back out. And then when it got to Keelan, a bit of pressure on him to stop him getting a, a clear chance on goal. Two, three engineers need to cut that out. They're allowing too many opportunities to get crosses in the box that could hurt them even more. It remains 2-2, though, in this 2023 Army Cup final. 122 years of history in this game. And this game... What a turn. Amongst one of the best. Vincent will pick that one up. Does... Plays it out to Tandy. Great pick out there. And here's Silver. Silver. On the ball again. Takes the shot. shot. Unlucky. Goes wide. <laughs> what a game that's been. We have almost have like little spurts and spits of spells where there'll be a chance and there'll be an immediate chance followed straight after. Um, the game's turned around three or four times. Great entertainment for several hundred fans here who've joined us tonight in the military stadium and for those of you watching on forces news youtube and facebook great to have you with us wherever you are in the world we know we've got viewers in germany tonight and no doubt across the rest of the forces world particularly if you've got an army interest here and it is so difficult to know which way the army challenge cup is going to go just at the moment. I just wonder how long it will be before both sides decide, okay, let's just go for the extra time. Good clearance though by team. I didn't see that, what happened now? There's a little bit, a little bit after. I think he just slipped. Vincent now chasing it, approaches the penalty area, got support in the middle. No it nonsense this, this time from the defender. It's not oh, a yet, what a though. great effort. Just over the bar. That would have been a spectacular goal if that had gone in. Well, Dalton Crompton, who's had his moments in this game. That could have been a spectacular one. But it goes 
over the top. Ian Moore learning from his mistakes and, and not uh, no nonsense clearance there. Well, it didn't go very far. He didn't leave it, which was what he uh, done in the build up to uh, two, three second goal. 2 2 the score. Core with the ball forward, aiming for Callum Vincent. Mopped up. Why should you mop Great again there? Against you, Mark. Yeah. He's had a terrific game, well. hasn't he? Yeah. But here come the Sappers again with Silver. Mott again. Some tired legs. Tired legs. There are there some now, tired yeah. legs. It could be the substitutes that make all the difference here. Yeah. There's a match winner here. So open. There's no midfield at all, nice really. Pass. The game has spread out so much with Crompton. Vincent. He's found him. Great turn from Tandy. It was Tandy. Oh, Great excellent. Pass. That's oh, a lovely side. Side. Wide with That's Simmons, close, who that is offside. A tight one. He wants it to go back. Last five minutes of normal time. Hasn't been many stoppages, maybe one or two minutes additional. Are we going to see the winner in the next five, seven minutes? He's in. Again. Oh, Great block. excellently Great defended block again. again. I think that's Simon Dean. And yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. Great work. Crompton, though, will bring it forward. Yes, thank you. Maybe a soft free kick there, but well battled, Simon Dean. I think two excellent blocks there. As tired legs appear more common now, I think this is the vulnerable stage for perhaps a lack of concentration. Yeah, for both of these teams, they've given absolutely everything, haven't they, tonight? Here's Silver again. Ball cleared out of play. And we're just, uh, what, three and a half minutes of normal time. There'll be a little bit of stoppage time for the substitutions, but uh, just a couple of breaks for um, a bit of uh, cramp. But apart from that, to the throw in, and Vincent. Yeah, I foul throw. Was, uh, foul, foul throw. throw. Yeah. Again, that's this stage uh, of the game. Maybe a, a sign from Matty Core there of a bit of fatigue. Tired legs, tired minds. Mm. Got a lot of time on the ball here Dented now. Dented as well. No. Couldn't keep it in play. It looks to me like we're heading in the direction of extra time, but um, we've said this so many times, and then suddenly late goals go in, and uh, cups are decided. Could this be a. I think overall it's been pretty fair, isn't it? I think this 2 2 is fair. Well, I think as both teams have had opportunities to, uh, to, to go further ahead and to basically to win the game. Yeah, I think uh, this is about right, isn't it, 2-2? Two, two. I think anything, I commend 3-Para for how they've come back into the game in the first half and then also, uh, you know, they were on the brink of being behind 3-1 and they've, they've come back and turned that round as well. Yeah, they, they did defended extremely well, but they're going to have to defend again. The shot comes in. Simon Dean, I think he's had a good game. Well, they've been carrying the ball out. He's moved into an essential midfield position now. They've been centre back in the first in the yeah. first 75 minutes. Well, there have been some excellent performances from uh, from both sides, individual performances. Um, I don't think we'll be naming the player of the match just yet, although it needs to be in your mind in case we do have a winning goal in the next couple of minutes. <laughs> nice touch from Vincent. Can he play him in? No. Well read again by Mott. Ting with the, the ball through. And here's Crompton. 
good challenge though. I still think we've got a big Baisley. chance. We've got a big chance left in this game. There's going to be one. I can feel it. But which way is it going to go? Is it going to be a, a player in a white shirt or a player in a maroon shirt? That's the question. Into the last minute of normal time in the cup final. Nice work from Silver. He'll spread the ball. Uh, I don't think Vincent is quite fast enough, and neither is uh, Ashley Tandy to get that one. I think they'll want to just keep going long. It's worked for them. Last 30 seconds of normal time. He's in round that Dante side again. Dante flicks it forward, no. but I don't think uh, that Jason Keelan, who has certainly made a difference, hasn't he, for three paras since he came on on that right-hand side. Yeah, he eased off uh, early on there. You could tell just a little bit too much in the in the pass. But they've certainly had a bit of success down that right-hand side, and, and him, he has been involved uh, in, in, in those attacks, getting some good crosses in, across the, uh, the ball that set the equaliser up. Michelle Knight says one last push three para. We've got three minutes of stoppage time before we head into half an hour of extra time. No team will want to take any risks now. They can see extra time looming. They will not want to give anything away now. Our first ball has actually gone right out of the stadium over the perimeter fencing on that far side they got a chance to get across cross comes in well defended, well defended yeah but again three para will have a chance to build and get Ball's this ball back in, there. Back in on the end of it is the defense it's mike williams again mike williams yeah, great work from him every first contact silver there box, just keeping all the ball liam silver It's all about strength and will now. Silver will take the throw in. Looking for some support. Vincent just creating the space. Instead, it goes to Tandy. And here's Williams, the captain. But that's a switch. A bit of a loose one. Side legs, yeah. Oh, he's in. Wormsley. Great oh. pass. There's the fresh legs the fresh on there. Legs coming on with Singh. Great defending. I'm sure that's what he was brought on to do. Yeah, that was Ting who made the defensive. He, Waterhouse has got a long throw. Three para not really taking any risks and overloading the box though. Substitutes helping in the warm up there. Ryan Waterhouse then with the long throw. The engineers to defend this. Deep into oh, enemy strong. territory. On the end oh, of it, it's a goal. Winner. It's in. And it is the Keelan. substitute. It's the goal. Jason Keelan has got the goal. Well, he was Literally, just up there on that far side. Just ghosted in and put the ball in the net with his left foot. Jason Keelan, is that the goal that's going to win think the so. Army Cup? Yeah, it's got to be about 30 seconds left. What a time to score. Well, how remarkable. So, Jason Keelan with the goal. And I think it's decision time, gentlemen, to decide. And there, there's so many players that really could claim the, the uh, player of the match award. And uh, a decision, I think, has been made. Yeah, um, it, we're going to give it to uh, a three-para player and, and a player who I said early on in the game, um, you know, kept, kept his team in it, saved a goal line, or a crucial save in the first couple of minutes and then saved the penalty. So young uh, Reese McNabb, man of the match this evening. Uh, I, think, I think given that they, they, were, they were on the brink of being 3-1 being down. Oh, hold on. They were nearly 3-1 down and... They're now 3-2 up in normal time and they've got him to thank for, for that, that lead not being extended and it has, it's spurred them on to get back in this game because they've been excellent since, since the, that penalty save. Yeah. It's been a remarkable match. Both teams could have won this by several goals. But it's three para who are on their way to seemingly claim this Army title, this yes, Army Cup. Uh, Waterhouse on the ball Warmsley. as a contender for man yeah, of the match I as think well. The skipper's been brilliant, especially second half. Well, I think see him tired there. He's cramping up. 
certainly led from example. But I think they're going to have their goalkeeper to thank today if they can hang on. Vincent Tandy and Silva also uh, up, up there as contenders for one of the match. But again, go back to McNabb there. That, that penalty save. Goalkeeper's going up. Phoenix Norman's going up. So this must be heading towards the last Nothing kick in the to game. Lose here. They're throwing everything at this, John. So Vincent then with the free kick. Oh, it's going to Norman Who's as well. It? Oh, oh it's skied in the end. That and will surely it be it. Time. That is the final and whistle. It. And the, and the celebrations begin for three para who what a really, final. from the claws of defeat, have claimed victory because, what? you know, you just had no idea that it was going to finish like that. And you've got to feel for two, three para engineer regiment. They are on dead on their feet on the on the floor, so many of them. But what a terrific game of football that was. Yeah, I think in, in football it is very common that if you don't take your chances at the right moments in the game, it can come back and swing around and bite you in the backside. I think they had an early opportunity to go to maybe three goals in front, which they failed to do. Three para worthily came back into the game. Two, three engineers had another opportunity to go two goals ahead. They failed to do that. And, um, yeah, they've been hit with a bit of a... Yeah, I think, three, I think three para rabbits in the, in the headlights in the first three minutes. Um, you know, a strong 2-3 engineer team come out there. Some army players, some names, Vincent, Silva, Tandy, uh, you know, getting them off on, on a good start. But 3-Para um, didn't give up, settled into it and are worthy winners, I think. Full credit to how they've come back into this game and, and they, they have got their rewards. Uh, absolute credit to them. Skipper thought it was excellent. Waterhouse um, was causing problems all game and, and, and as we've announced the man of the match the goalkeeper they'll have him to thank because it, it could have easily been 3-1 well, at could, one stage and they, they, they've done it there'll be a party in Colchester tonight <laughs> well I think uh, you know the airborne obviously both airborne regiments you know have uh, produced a terrific final for the haven't they this is the first time we've ever had uh, two airborne regiments competing in the, in this army cup final and just look what it means to uh, the boys there from three para not very long ago, just a couple of weeks ago, not too far from where we are now, it was two para who won the army boxing title. And of course, last year, three para won the army boxing title as well. So good days indeed for the uh, parachute regiment. But you, you have to feel for a two, three para engineer regiment in their first army final, uh, who just fell at that final hurdle there. Uh, and it was all credit to... Uh, to three para and um, they took that chance you did say there'd be one last chance in this game you were absolutely right <laughs> there often is the roll of the dice and 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 they took it you know i also said about two three engineers not not a time to lose concentration i think they did there the ball bounce in the box and um yeah i think they've they've paid the price but they've been worthy finalists they they six minutes in i thought they were going to run away with this this game but absolutely worthy finalists they've got some great players in there great youth coming through which I'm, I'm sure will be there next year and I'm sure they'll come back hungry next year I think hats off to the coaching staff of both teams as well you've got two busy busy units here um, uh, and it's easy to forget about the the extras the footballs the rugby the sports um, but it, it, you know it's proven personality driven and, and hats off to the coaches for driving football in their units you can just tell with the way they look they look professional and I think if you look and feel professional and you'll you know you'll you'll give it your role on the pitch and that's certainly what both teams done this evening absolutely just uh, reading a few uh, messages that are coming through obviously a huge number of uh, supporters for three para just uh, delighted Michelle Knight get in there and uh, a goal Michelle Knight has been uh, one of our correspondents this evening well played to three para uh, Denise Schofield well done three para great game and uh, Blake Somerville says up with the reg so an awful lot of uh, support then for three para over there in uh, Colchester tonight and um, but I think as you say it's two teams who have really made this game very very special this evening uh, because uh, they produce a, a, a terrific uh, Army Cup final for us tonight. Uh, and, um, you know, we couldn't have asked for any better. I mean, the excitement started literally from the word go, didn't it? You know, with two great chances for uh, for the Sappers. They could have been two up inside the first minute. Yeah, I think I think from the from the first first minute to the last, we had, we had everything, didn't we? We had absolutely everything. The game swung around on multiple occasions and 
credit to two teams they just did not give up and it and it was going to take an absolute late winner to to decide this this tie and on this occasion three power come out top um on a different day it might have been different but that's uh football isn't it it is indeed well both of you you know know what it's like uh, you know to to win and uh, obviously to to concede as well late goals and how gussing it is i mean it'll be difficult for two three para to pick themselves up won't it after this because you know they, they were ahead in twice in the match it could have as you say could have extended that lead to 3-1 and, and you didn't see at 3-1 that there'd be any way back for three para but that missed penalty absolutely crucial from a man you would have expected to put it away in Callum Vincent yeah I banked on him to score but it's a cup final that brings nerves um, he's, 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 he's put the ball into the what he thought was the, the corner of the goal and the goalkeeper's read it and he's he's effectively won his won his team the game today and Callum Vincent will be disappointed I know he will um, he'll dwell on this for some time but he should be proud of his achievements he's, he's helped his unit get to the Army Cup final and it wasn't to be today for him no it wasn't uh, well the presentation is going to be made very very shortly uh, for the Challenge Cup and uh, it's going to be down in front of us here in the main stand at the uh, military stadium here in Aldershot. Team's starting to line up now, ready for the presentation. Uh, I think there'll be a couple of relief players in the squads as well. The legs were starting to do, uh, tire a little there. Um, would have been an interesting extra time if it had gone that far, but um, not to be on this occasion. And a, a, a last minute um, winner from. Uh, Keelan. I, I suspect the tired legs of three para will not be quite as tired as the, the tired legs of uh, two three para engineer regiment at the uh, the end of that. Uh, well, I'd expect to see uh, three para on uh, PT tomorrow morning. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe with a stretcher or a log or something like that as a reward. I think a word for our officials as well. They've done such a great job this evening. Sergeant Simon Thorburn from the Royal Signals controlled the game tonight with his assistant Staff Sergeant Steve Timms and Corporal Harry Scott. Yeah, excellently managed by Sinai's team. Yeah, they did, did a great job. Round of applause. Look at the Andy Cox uh, just saying a few things there. Yeah, the chairman of Army Football Association. And now the presentation will be made. And the player of the match, the officials will get their medals first of all. I think a shout out to Grim Brooklyn and the Army FA as well for uh, putting this superb final on this evening. As, as, as ever, a, a, a team that works tirelessly in the background. Absolutely right. And to run the tournament as well, as you said earlier on, so difficult with all the operations and uh, the uh, exercises that the, the units had to go on. Officials getting their recognition from the crowd there. Good to see. So Simon Thorburn comes up to receive his medal. With Steve Timms, Harry Scott and the fourth official tonight, Baz Ellison. All did a great job as to all our military officials as well. Next we will have the Player of the Match Award. Well done, two, three, so they come up to get their losers medals it's a horrible feeling I, I was there 10 years ago I could see skipper Mike Williams I was a skipper at the time and you work all year for this this would have been their prize that they'd have worked so hard for training every week getting players released the unit trying to accommodate around busy commitments um, and yeah they fell short at the end but they've uh, they've done brilliantly 
Well, they have acquitted yeah, themselves indeed. extremely well. You know, there'll be a lot of pride in the regiment tonight, I'm sure, for everyone who's watching. They might not feel it now, but a great achievement to get to the final. And to compete so well, and they came so close to winning it, let's face it. There's man of the match, Reese McNabb. Saved the penalty. the penalty. And that, in that, that, that save in the first minute as well. Yeah. Absolutely crucial. Yeah. Great cheer from his teammates. I think that recognition, that cheer there, suggests that they Checked are the minute, didn't he? fully appreciated of him today. It wasn't for them saves, T3 would win. And so it's time then for the presentation of the medals to the winning team, to three para. It's a magnificent trophy there that they're going to lift tonight as well. Yeah. This stems back some years. I know a lot of units have, have had the joys of winning this on multiple occasions and it's, it's done the rounds and I know that every single unit play for this. It is the Army Cup and what an achievement they've just made today. Yeah, they certainly have. There's an infant here. It's nice to see an infantry unit uh, getting their hands on it again. I think uh, one Yorks were the last infantry unit to uh, win this trophy a couple of years ago. Yeah, great night for infantry sports. And of course, we, we've got the, uh, the core final coming up, haven't we, on the 24th of uh, this month, a bit later on, at Sutton United. That's for the... Uh, it's another great venue for... The Royal uh, Signals, I know, are involved in that. And uh, against the RLC, I believe. I think that's the core final. And of course, we've got the women's as well on the same day. It's this moment. It's this moment they vision. Yeah, Wormsley. This is what means everything to the team. Just having a look around there. Are we going to get sprayed running champagne, Griff? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> or sparkling water yeah. if we're really lucky. <laughs> Time for the Challenge Cup then to be presented to the winning captain. Dominic Wormsley. 2022-23 season. Army Challenge Cup winners. Three para, well done. And there we go. It's always a great moment, isn't it? And warm applause from the runners up tonight. And there'll be a lot of celebrations, as you say, going on in Colchester this evening. So congratulations to them. Commiserations to 2-3 Para Engineer Regiment. That's the presentation. That's the Army Cup. Huge thanks this evening to Jimmy Blair and to Griff Griffiths who joined me on commentary this evening. May also thanks to the team here, to Mark Hearn and, uh, and our engineer as well this evening, uh, looking after things uh, tonight as well. Our engineering team here back as well at our headquarters at uh, Chalfont Grove. Uh, but from me, John Knighton, and all the team here in Aldershot, it's congratulations to 3Para and we will see you again tomorrow with more live football. We'll have the RAF Cup final, that's from quarter to one tomorrow, and that's being played at Oxford City FC, and it'll be a, a cracking game as well tomorrow between RAF Boomer and RAF Cosford. Do join me there if you can, but from all of us here in Aldershot, it's a very good night. Well, that's good, what an enjoyable game. Yeah.